Hello educators and welcome to Lesson 3 Google Slides. In this lesson, we will be taking a look at the collaborative features of Google Slides and interactivity on the LG Create Board. During the lesson, you will see a few different ways to share a slide deck. Then we will go on a quick tour of the main features of Google Slides. You will also see some student artifacts made in Google Slides by actual students. Finally, we will be sharing some templates you can use right away with your LG Create Board, including some interactive writing templates to help students practice and share their writing in real time. And finally, we will be including a playlist for you to take a deeper dive into Google Slides to learn more. And now, we will turn it back over to Chris to take us through our lesson. Thanks, Alex. We're now going to take a look at our lesson on Google Slides. Google Slides is a digital tool that's part of Google Workspace that allows students to collaborate in real time. To launch it, we've saved a desktop icon for Google Drive. I'm going to launch that. And that will launch our web browser. And then to create a new one, slide, we can go to new, Google Slides, and that will create a new one. Another alternative is to type in slides.new into our web browser Omnibox, and that will launch a new slide as well. Okay, now that we have our slide, Google Slide Show started, let's give it a title. Okay. Now, when it comes to sharing, we can share through the Create Board Share but you don't have the collaborative shared space experience that Google Slides can provide. So uh, you can also share slides out using Google Classroom. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, we'll include a deeper dive into Classroom as part of our resources at the end of the lesson. So what I'll do is I'll walk through a quick share. So with my students, I can share to individual students or groups. Uh, so we have the ability to share via email. So, and I can make that person a viewer, a commenter, or an editor. Give them a message if I want. Okay. So viewer, they only have view access to this presentation. Commenter means they can comment. They could insert comments about a particular aspect of the presentation. Uh, but they can't edit or they can actually have edit access and that's when I want it to be highly collaborative and students interacting. You can also just share a link to any individual. So right now it's restricted but I can click anyone with the link and they can view it or they can edit it. And then I copy that link and I share that link out via Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology or any other platform that I'm already using. So then if I want to modify my theme right now, we've got a blank theme. Um, I like it because it's clean and it's not distracting to students, which is a big bonus. Um, but sometimes this simple light is uh, the way to go, or you may want to go with a dark theme. I tend to prefer to go with blank slides because students can then add the elements that they need to make the slides their own. Okay, let's take a look at some of the menu items and slides that help our students with collaboration. So there is the insert menu, and this is probably where the most things will happen. This is where we can insert things onto our board uh, specifically, we can add images. So we can upload from our computer, which would allow us to pick files. We could insert from the web, and that'll open up our search functionality over here. And I'm gonna find pyramid and insert that into my picture. So that's one way to do it. Uh, there is also the ability to insert from Google Drive, photos, a URL if you have an address on the web, or to take a selfie uh, using the camera. 
and the camera functionality. And so that will activate the camera if the camera is active on student devices or present on student devices, and they can take a picture and have that inserted directly into the presentation. We'll come back to the insert menu in just a moment. And the file menu, this is where we can share. Uh, this is where we can also uh, modify the page setup. This is probably to me one of the most important functions because I can actually do a custom. So right now we're in standard widescreen. We do a custom five by 11 if I want to do page layout size. Prefer creating a newsletter or creating um, a brochure. Um, if we have a project that requires students to create a brochure for their uh, historical um, region or geography or any sort of project like that, um, the eight and a half by 11 format works really well because it can actually print um, using the file print. And obviously you have to have access to a printer, uh, but you can save that file as a PDF. So then you also have the um, view, and this is where we can show speaker notes, which are down below, or we can um, do all sorts of things like show a grid. We can snap to the grid, uh, which will allow us to snap to items. Um, we have the format menu, which allows us to format text. So we see all of the traditional things that we see in Google Docs. We have the ability to insert a new slide anywhere, slide, new slide, or duplicate, copy. I like Command C, Command V. That allows me to duplicate slides quickly if I'm creating slides for students, um, for enough students in my class and I can change the background, apply a layout, perfect for a newsletter. I can also uh, change the background to a different color on individual pages. Then on arrange, this is how we can arrange elements. I won't go too deep into this. There's some resources that we'll share with you. Um, and then the Explorer. And Explorer allows you to, or helps you to build beautiful slides. So as you're working on your presentation, it'll offer suggestions. Coming back to our insert, this is where we can insert those images as I shared before. Our text box, this is where we can add a text box and customize the font. Pretty small right now, but if I increase it, use the drop down, you can get that large scale font and actually move it around on the page. That's why I like slide so much is that it's easily organized on a page, drag and drop. Works really well with the create board, works really well with uh, students on iPads, Chromebooks, any device really. Okay. And then I can also insert video from YouTube. Let's find uh, ancient Egypt. Okay. Okay, Ramses the Great. Let's insert that. It's going to insert that, and I can resize it. And I can have it play on click automatically or manual. So let's have it do automatically when it's playing on this page. You can also mute the audio if I wanted to. And perfect. So when I go into slideshow mode, it automatically plays. Okay. And then the other things we have is shapes. And so shapes are instrumental for creating great page layouts. So we have squares, circles, arrows. We can fill it with text. And so there's lots of great resources for 
um, Google Slides and all the things you can do with Google Slides. Um, and we'll point to some resources uh, that really, really help you. And then the other part of it is uh, you can insert diagrams. So you have, let's go to a new, new page, insert diagram and we can show relationships which are similar to Venn diagrams we can see all these things and so we can just modify these so they're kind of pre-formatted templates that allow us to modify them so there you go okay and now we'll look at a student artifact for um, an eighth grade English language arts assignment uh, they were reading the book uh, crossover by Kwame Alexander. It's a book about basketball. And uh, with this particular project, uh, students were able to uh, take ownership and establish, um, um, take interest in this work. They did a really fantastic job of establishing ownership over individual slides. And so when we look at this presentation, we see that students uh, took over their own slides and had their own uh, slides their own selfies and they're able to take some ownership and then inject student voice into this process um, these are great beginning types of activities to get students um, hooked into reading and the ability to um, really unpack a book uh, and dive a little bit deeper into the hero's journey um, the setting the characters and the conflicts or problems that are connected to that and then one of the things that's um, nice is that when students are having their own individual slides, they're really able to stick focused on that individual slide, focused on building it, and they're not off moving around and doing other things. One great way that we like to use slides with the LG Create Board is to change the background to a handwriting template in Google Slides. So to do that, we need to go to slides, change background and choose an image. In order to choose an image, you have to have an image. So let's go to a quick Google search and find blank penmanship practice paper. And I'm going to select this particular one, uh, a nice one. It's just plain penmanship and I'm going to browse. There we go. and get rid of the title. And this allows students to then write on it. So to copy a whole bunch, Command C, Command V. And that is, put it on the text box, Command C plus V on a Mac or Control C plus V on a PC or, or Chromebook and that'll do you uh, correctly and then uh, students can work on these independently on the crate board um, or on a tablet or on a touch device. I'll now pass it back to Alex who has some additional resources for you to learn about Google Slides. Thanks, Chris. And as promised here are some resources for you. First, if you would like some additional training on slides, head on over to the Google Training Center and learn more about that powerful tool. If you are more of a visual learner and would like to do a deeper dive into Google Classroom and Google Slides, we have curated a YouTube playlist for you to explore. If you are looking for slide templates, you just need a simple Google search to find thousands of them ready to go for your classroom. We hope you had fun learning about Google Slides. We will see you in the next lesson.